cloud. And let me share the screen. So hopefully you should see the meeting minutes now. And hopefully yes. you can hear me as well. Uh, so first point on the agenda, open forum for any questions and issues. Does anyone have anything they want to discuss? Okay, hearing nothing. Then let's move to the open PRs and uh, issues. So I listed three things which seem to be something we should discuss. So this is just a note, something we discussed two weeks ago on the last community call. This is kind of the experimental implementation of the of the Zookeeper-less Kafka based on 2.8. So if anyone is interested in that, uh, feel free to have a look at it, but there's no specific action item or, or anything attached to it. It doesn't really need review necessarily or anything like that. And then another thing is this PR from Mike Edgar, which, uh, tries to deal with uh, canceling the ongoing reconciliation when the resource is deleted. Uh, I thought that Paul or Tom Bentley were involved in the issue, we'll have a look at it, but it looks like nobody commented on it so far. So I don't know what we plan to do with it. To be honest, uh, To me, it seems like quite a big risk with very little value. But yeah, to be honest, I didn't look into the code uh, either to see how uh, how bulletproof it is and how we know for sure that it will actually work. Anyone, any thoughts about this? Yeah, I've not had a chance to look at this yet. I think it dropped off the bottom of my inbox into uh, the, yeah. Um, so I can't really comment, but um, I will look at it. Okay, so let's, wait, that's not this one, that's this one. Okay, and then the last PR which I pointed out is uh, this one uh, about adding the the smart ex. Uh, sorry, not sure how exactly is this pronounced. Smart ix, whatever logo to the website. Uh, so I think it needs some changes to the logo and to the DCO. Uh, and the PR doesn't allow maintainers to commit in. So I guess the question is, do we try to wait for the author to fix it or should I open the separate PR which fix the layout and uh, we take it as opening the PR sufficient intention to show it and we can do it ourselves. I just, um ping him again because what the last time there was any action on there was the 11th of may um it might just be that his inbox has things drop off the end of it as well okay and you leave it like a, a week or so and then yeah why not just do as you suggest and make the changes ourselves 
Yeah, I agree with this. And, and comment on this one to say that that's what we're going to do. And if they've changed their minds, then they should, yeah, reply. Okay, so I guess like this. Well, anyway, <laughs> too late to complain. That's perfect. Okay, anyone has any other yars to discuss? If not, then I also listed uh, one proposal. That's the network policy proposal, which is also now waiting for a response for quite some time. So what do we do with this one? Do we give it another chance? Yeah. I mean, it's two weeks, so you could ping him again and see. Uh... Okay. Any other proposals to discuss? Just on the proposals, I know that um, for a while you've been planning to open a proposal around the drain cleaner. Um, okay. I've been asked a few times kind of uh, for an approximate kind of time frame on that. Is it something you're thinking of doing soon or is it on the kind of the medium term backlog? I don't know when I get to it, to be honest. And the proposal is one thing, but then there's quite some work to move it and so on. Yeah. For those of us who don't know what a drain cleaner is, what's the drain cleaner? That's the thing which you pour into your drain when it gets, uh, when the water doesn't flow out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a plunger man myself. That's uh, the utility which, uh, so we have this uh, feature. I don't want to call it issue because I convinced that that's the best way we can do, but we have the readiness probes of the brokers, the readiness state disconnected from whether the partitions are or replicas are in sync or not in sync, all of them, which I think is smart thing and it, means that uh, uh, it follows the Kubernetes semantics, uh, uh, that it's ready when it's ready to accept clients. But uh, when you are draining nodes or when you are basically having voluntary disruptions, then Kubernetes are basically using uh, the pod disruption budgets and the readiness state to decide when can they move the next pod. So if you would be draining multiple nodes with multiple uh, Kafka pods, then basically it would start with the first one, then it will drain it, uh, basically stop the pod, start it somewhere else, wait until it gets ready, and then stop the next one and so on. And because of how the readiness probe works, that doesn't guarantee that you don't have any interruptions to the cluster availability for the Kafka clients because maybe the topics or maybe the partition replicas to be precise are not yet in sync and you get under replicated and so on. So what this drain cleaner does is if you want, it allows you to set, uh, to basically disable the voluntary disruptions using the pod disruption budget. Uh, and then uh, when you are trying to drain the nodes, the drain cleaner is detecting this and instead of just deleting the pods, it basically used the rolling update annotation on the Kafka brokers or Zookeeper nodes to basically have the operator do a controlled shutdown of the pod and start, which actually guarantees that the operator will, because it's basically part of the regular rolling update, the operator is doing the checks that before it shuts down the next broker node, 
replicas will get uh, under-replicated and out of sync and so on. Okay, got it. Thanks for that description. I was aware of the problem. I hadn't realized it had been given that name, but that's that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, it's actually the original name is Chistich Odpadu. <laughs> Might be hard to pronounce and read for non-Czech speakers. <laughs> I'm imagining all sorts of consonants next to each other and funny accents. Anything else to proposals? Then just a quick update on the 024 release, which I'm trying to get out. So uh, I think there are now three main things waiting to be finished before we do release candidate. And that's the connect logging. So if I understood it right, we are now going with Tom's PR and just waiting for the regression tests to pass, right? Then there is yep. the, the Kafka exporter. So it looks like the current version has one issue and that's it doesn't allow changing local levels. So I think we need to see if we can fix it easily or what do we do with it? So that's another thing which we want. And then the next one is the uh, GitHub reported yesterday some CVE in the OAuth 08. So uh, I'm working on a 08.1 and we need to update bridge and operators to use this new version to not necessarily have CVEs in the release before it's even done. So that should hopefully be, yeah, I should be able to proceed with it. Uh, tonight so that should be ready tomorrow and that's probably it unless someone has someone something else to add to the 24 release nothing for me okay then the next thing i edit sorry Yaka, the... before yeah. you before you go on um I think a lash is on PTO from tomorrow. Um, yeah, so, I know. I noticed that. Um, which is not a very convenient time for trying to fix the logging issues with the exporter. Um, do we have any backup plan for that? Um, is there anyone else who can has sufficient Go experience to have a look at that? Not in our repository, right? So, sorry? Not in Alesh's repository. Not... And presumably after so it's I... fixed, it needs a new release and... Yeah. So I guess the option is uh, to go with it as a known issue. To be honest, I'm not sure if the original or the current version actually does anything useful and interesting on the, on the debug level. I don't think there was any time that much interesting stuff anyway. So maybe it doesn't matter that much, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Another option is, I guess, to stick with uh, the current version and leave this for the next release. Yeah, I think that would that make our lives more difficult downstream. I realize this isn't a call to be discussing that on, but... Um... No, I don't think it matters really. Okay. Okay, so I guess... Uh...
Yeah, so do we want to wait if Alesh managed to come up with something tonight or do we want to make the decision right now? I got the impression that Alesh was, and I haven't spoken to him about it, but I got the impression he was kind of unlikely to be working this evening. Um, but I don't, I don't have any data to back that up. Um, yeah, it's I mean, not my. You can't can't blame him if he's getting somewhere away, for example, tomorrow. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, I. It's not my decision to make, but I would be happy going with a kind of a known known issue. Tom, Sander. Uh, just a question: uh, Dogging can be changed, or? Yeah, it cannot be changed. So, what level do we use as uh, as default or non changeable? I guess it's info level, or I have <laughs> I haven't seen any other messages than info. The Sarama logging has separate flag, so that still works and triggers some uh, some uh, Sarama messages. Uh, but from the exporter itself, it gets only the info messages and uh, yeah, nothing else. Uh, I think uh, I'm for uh, uh, now on the back. Sorry? Yeah, okay, okay. Tom, you? Yeah, I, I can go with a known issue as well, assuming that um, the logging that is enabled isn't, you know, overwhelmingly verbose. So the logging which is enabled, it does about... I have it running here, but with the Sarama logging. So uh, I can probably share what the actual logging is. So, I mean, these are the Sarama logs. So they have separate switch. And these are the, the log messages uh, which are there by default. So that's basically these uh, fetch consumer group metrics uh, and the concurrent calls detected. So normally, uh, let me try to disable it to make it edit Kafka. It will be a bit easier to see when I disable the Sarama logging. But it's basically a few lines per minute or something like that. It's not like okay. hundred, hundreds of lines per second or anything like that. Okay. It's not that the periodical, it pretty much just shows that it's working and it's getting some requests, but that's it by default. Mm, I'm just wondering how I feel about this because obviously this is um, there's some new stuff in here that therefore is you know more likely to be buggy than existing stuff um, and if you can't change the logging to help you debug that then that's not ideal but then the alternative is to what delay the release and wait till Alice gets back from holiday or for someone to try and pick it up. But then the question is who and when can that be done by? So those aren't ideal alternatives either. Well, we can keep the status quo as well, right? Being what the old logics, the old exporter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so what you see on the screen, it's pretty much what it's, what it's mm -hmm. printing. I guess maybe in some case of error, it might do something more, but I haven't seen any errors or anything. So, so, so this is this I is saw. like I've lost track of where we are on this. This is a, a fork of the original Kafka exporter that means it scales better, and a few other bells and whistles. Is that where we went with this? That should be the main, the main fix. Yes, that okay. uh, it. Uh, 
that it uh, should not have the issues the 1.2 version had mm -hmm. with uh, yeah i don't know if it was scaling per se i had sometimes these issues like connecting to the broker and getting the groups even without uh, big scale just looking at the original um, upstream logger, it only seems to have uh, info and error level level logging anyway. Okay, this is painting a picture that we should just go with this as it is. To me, anyway. So we good with that? Yeah. I'm good with that. Just a known issue. Thank you. Okay, so then that shouldn't be a blocker, hopefully. Uh, so that's, I guess, it for the 024 release, unless anyone has anything else. Okay, the next point which I wanted to discuss is that I wonder if we should try to do some 1.0 releases. It's probably not the right time for the operators, uh, but I was wondering about some of the smaller components. So the Mirror Maker 2 extensions, where we have this identity replication policy. That's now in the 0.1.0 for a long time, but it basically works and there doesn't seem to be need for any change. So do we want to do 1.0 of that and kind of give it some more reasonable version number that way? Or I know there was some discussion about having something like that directly in Mirror Maker 2, but not sure when that comes, whether we should just keep it as a zero one and wait for Mirror Maker 2. So I'm trying to remember. I've seen something about this, but there's so much traffic on the Kafka list these days. Um, I think, I don't know if I saw it on the mailing list. I think, uh, what's their name? Ryan Dolan. And uh, he mentioned it on the Kafka Summit talk, I think, which he had with, uh, I think, Mikhail. Is it 690? KIP 690, is that the one we're talking about? The internal topics naming convention. No, it's not that one, is it? Anyway, um, the question, I guess, I, I don't have a problem with that going to 1.0. We think that there's nothing more sort of feature-wise that needs adding and we think it's stable then we could do a release that called it 1.0. No, I think Anna? 690 does something else. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can move to 1.0. Okay, so. That's one. Then other one I was thinking about is the OAuth library. And luckily we have Marco here, so I don't know. Yeah, I like, about uh, it, Marco. it would be good for um, version one to include the metrics that I'm working on now. Um, it, it gives that little something extra that rounds out the feature set. So should we say that the next release should be 1.0? Then basically, um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it, yeah, it depends on how we trust ourselves uh, to 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 sort of say, okay, this set of metrics is a, a good one. Uh, yeah, we can we can do one with that. There seems to be no problems with it. Yeah, we can go ahead. <laughs> So, so it should, we do, should we do zero nine first with the metrics and give it 
Really yeah, that makes more sense to me. Um, so community can also give it a try and is there any yeah, we can we can announce, can't we, that we expect this to be the last release before 1.0, and that would let people sort of uh, encourage them to take it for a spin, I guess. Okay, so. We do metrics, we do 09, we do release or more. And if it all works, no complaints and so on, then we do 1.0. Yeah. And then I guess, but I'm not sure we should get into the details without Paolo. Uh, the bridge, I don't know what you think about that standard. It looks like to be honest, there's not much development going on. Yeah, I would wait for Paolo. I'm not sure whether there is any interest about IMQP. There is. We should do some of the work we did with Microsoft okay. in the AMQP TC. But I'm not sure when we <laughs> when we have time for it. So. So let's uh, let's maybe wait for for a meeting when Paolo is here as well, since he did a lot of the bridge work. Yeah, that seems sensible. Okay. Any other stuff which you think should do 1.0? I think the uh, most of the other things are mostly new: the Kubernetes config provider, the quotas plugin, and so on. So I think that needs more time to see how that works. Yeah, I think we should start um, thinking about what the roadmap is to get to 1.0 for the operators. You know, I think we've sort of talked verbally about a few sort of things, but it might be a good time to sort of set down in, in writing um, what we think is necessary before we can call the operators 1.0. The sort of um, KIP 500 picture is becoming clearer. Um, so obviously it doesn't have to come with a timeline, but just sort of feature wise, what we think is necessary would I think be useful for the community to sort of know, um, yeah, kind of where we're going and where we're going to end up. What do you think? To be honest, if you ask me, I think we should do the KIP 500. And when that's done, we should call it 1.0 and not create any huge roadmaps beyond that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, but I think it's time by... to do 1.0 and uh, yeah, adding some more features on top of that might move us two years in the future, right? Yeah, no, I, d I don't disagree. But what exactly do you mean by KIP 500? I would, so in my view, I would think uh, being able to upgrade from Zookeeper-based Kafka to Zookeeperless mm -hmm. Kafka and being, mm -hmm. being able to run Zookeeperless Kafka. So let's say, yeah, Kafka 3.2 or 3.3, .3, something like that maybe in kind of that time region. Okay. So when we have kind of clear idea and implemented it, uh, how to run without Zookeeper basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I would, I'm not sure kind of waiting for Kafka 4.0 to have the Zookeeper removed. I don't know. No, I think that, that seems to it's be unnecessary i think yeah. I, th I i agree in, in that you know if we can sort of be clear on what the api is going to be around you know with with kit 500 and not having a zookeeper cluster yeah, um, yeah, that, i think that that's enough to call it a 1.0 yeah exactly i guess that's that's the same as my view to kind of have have the api done mm -hmm. and know that that's the that's the kind of 
stable API for that to go forward. Okay, thanks. So I wanted to also discuss the future of the test container because I don't think it works as it's done right now. It doesn't really fit into the CI and we have to basically disable the tests in the release because it doesn't really match there. And it seems when I was trying to move the tests of the bridge where it's used for that, it's like there's a lot of tests which use some special settings in Kafka and we basically cannot set it for the test container. Plus the test container is always putting stuff from Docker Hub and running into the limit. So to be honest, I don't know. We should probably discuss what value it has and whether it's useful. And if you think it is useful, I think we should move it into a separate repository and kind of maintain it out of band from the, from the streams releases. But I guess that's something what we should discuss when also Jakub is here and maybe Marosh and so on. So probably not for today's meeting, I guess. Yeah, I think it's difficult to discuss without them. And that seems to be it for the agenda. Does anyone have anything else? So no from me. Yeah, right. Uh, the network policy proposal, David Lin, the, the guy who wrote it, says he will have a look at it next week. So that should hopefully have some updates next time. Okay, if that's it, then 